Here at Carol Nash, we work with two of the UK's best motorcycle racers. We've got six-time world champion Jonathan Ray and Moto2 podium finisher Jake Dixon. But, well, they've never actually raced against each other, so we thought, why not come here, stick them in a couple of carts and uh, have a bit of fun? Let me, what we're doing here. Oh no. Hey, it's a local for me though, so it's pretty good. For track knowledge. Yeah, track knowledge. Being a bit, a bit lighter than me, like you me. obviously had the advantage. Is that what the excuses are? You had the better car. So I had the better car and I still lost last lap battle. Honestly. Hey, but it was good though. Yeah, it was good to give you your first win of the season. Yeah, well, yeah, there is that. You've had plenty this year. I've not had any yet, so. <laughs> Talking about that, how, how's it going? It's the best season obviously I've had today. The team's great. I find in Moto2, the main thing is if, if you have a good foundation with a team, everything's this, well the same. If you have that foundation, I think it's really, really good and the team's great for me. I feel fast this year and uh, I'm not doing anything different. As you know, when you get the bike and when you get everything working as a package, it comes so easy. And that's how I feel this year. But yeah, it's good and I feel like the wind's not too far away. You say the bikes are really, really similar. Isn't it amazing in racing? And I've found this through my career that people make such a big difference, people and atmosphere yeah. in a team. I was explaining earlier to the guys, you know, advice you would give track day guys, yeah. and it's more about racing, it's all about confidence, isn't it? 100%, if you don't have the confidence, you know, if, if, you're on, if you're on form and you've got full of confidence, you'll ride so different to if you're a bit down and, and not so confident. You'll ride the bike in a different way, you'll take liberties with the bike, you'll let the bike slide more underneath you, front and rear. But yeah, I get what you mean, but you always have confidence watching you on the bike. And this year's been pretty good for you, so. Last year was tough. I missed out on the championship. You know, went down to the last race in Indonesia. Before we go, how cool is that track? Oh my God. Hey, that track when we turned up this year, obviously bearing in mind no one had been there. Straight away, my first goal for the first right kink was to hold it flat out. No. So you come out the complex, you go right, left, left, and then that first fast right. No. Yeah, flat out. Flat out. In, in qualifying, it was flat out, yeah. Yeah, how scary is that next bit, that right, left, and it's Oh my blind. God, it's so good. I love learning new tracks and going to new places. And you're good at it. Yeah. So it always helps. Well, I find everybody's good at it. You know, at like, this level, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's tough. I just find sometimes, you know like Indonesia, I think everyone sees from the outside uh, what you do on a Sunday and the lights go out, but I'm still like a super fan. Like I landed in Lombok and I was like, how lucky am I to do this job? You know what I mean? And how amazing is the place? Yeah. I literally, well, it's so, so different to where we live, it's so amazing. So when we got there, there was there was nothing. In fact, they just put up this new hotel, probably was open for you guys, just by the track. And I went there to check in. And they're like, is this the, whatever it was, Novotel? And they're like, no, no, it's over there. So it's off. Oh. Is there no one to check me in? I said, no, the hotel's not open yet. So they were just opening everything for Superbike, so. So literally, as you arrived, I bet there would have been no um, tarmac road. There's no tarmac road We had near tarmac the track, road, yeah. yeah. Hey, we always get the priority. <laughs> yeah. so that's cool. But talking about um, Indonesia and stuff, what's about being a pro rider, what's your favorite thing now about traveling the world, being in the world championship? I get to see so many amazing cultures, nationality, everything, places, and I get to experience it with my wife. Yeah, that that for me is 
if if I didn't have Sarah travel with me everywhere, I think things would become probably a little bit harder. But as I get to have my wife on the road, I think that's the most special thing for me. Yeah. And what about for you? Uh, food, food cultures. I enjoy like all different food from all around the world. Yeah. I think uh, Australia is pretty good for nailing everything. Yes, oh, you know, mate, there's so much so good. like Asia influence there. They do Mediterranean, you know, like barbecue. I like, I love. But what's your favourite track? Favourite track in the World Championship? Maybe Port of Mao. Hey, or, I, or oh my Phillip God. Island. It's got two different me, tracks. Port of Mao for me is that's some track. It's good in it. It's a rider's track. I bet the guy designing Port of Mao thought. Pff, bet it was a young kid. Yeah, hey. That drew it out for his dad. Can you just draw us a track, a little nine year old? Can yeah. you draw us a track? Inspired yeah. by a bit of Alton Tars. <laughs> yeah. And he's like a thrill seeker. Yeah. And then, because I remember we went there first in Superbike, first guys to go there. And everyone's like, oh, MotoGP will never come here. Formula One will never come here. And now look. Look at it. It's like and GP went last year it. for the first time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And everyone loved it. It was, it was pretty, pretty cool. Hey, but first of all, it's our first ever battle we've ever had on track together. We've never raced against each other. Yeah, I couldn't believe that because I remember watching you on BSB thinking, what age would you have been when I left BSB? Would you have been in 125s? You hadn't even started racing no. in 2007? No, I hadn't even started racing. <laughs> That's mad to think, isn't it? Like, 2010, when I first started, you was riding Castro Honda. I was riding a Hansbury Honda in World Champ. My second year in the Superbike Championship. Remember the year, it was the year that uh, was dubbed the Haslam Biaggi finale? Yes. Well, I, yeah. was, I was right in that battle yeah, until I broke my wrist. I broke my wrist with two races to go and uh, tried to ride with a broken wrist to, um, to salvage uh, you know, a top three in the championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and, it's never uh, easy, though. Oh, I finished fourth. But you know, to be credit to my team, they actually stood over a third place bonus because they pulled me out of the last race because I was in agony. I wanted really? to go out and ride it. Which is mad, isn't it? You hey, think? that's mad to think. Hey, not many teams would do that now. No, but we were talking about it earlier with the guys about riding with injuries. And See, people the, don't the fear realize. of like motorbike riders is that if you're not in that shop window, you're going to get forgotten You're going to get forgotten about. Yeah. And it's, you see it now with riders that have spent maybe a year away from the track, yeah. trying to come back or a year yeah. injured. The level's yep. always improving, but you sort of get left behind. Of course you do. You lose that little bit. So I think that's half the reason why people want to get still ride with I mean I think Leon Haslam rode with a broken leg at Phillip Island. You know, it's just you crazy. see Jorge Lorenzo flying from Aston to Barcelona on a Friday to get a collarbone plate yeah, to ride yeah. on Saturday. But people don't quite realise what you go through and, and mentally what you go through with that as well. Like you all know, I bet through your career you, you've struggled mentally because in this sport it's such a mental aspect and if you're in the right frame of mind it's really good but there can be dark times from when you're injured or when things aren't going quite right and obviously it rang you a lot last year when it wasn't going right and you were always saying to me, look, be fine, just keep chipping away, it'll come good. And I feel like you've been quite a good uh, supporter for me whenever it has been going wrong, because I feel like you know what I can do. It's gone great for you, you know, and you've been there and you've, and you've gone through it all. So for me to, to experience that, to have that from you, I think that helped me mentally a lot. Oh, cheers, mate. Just don't forget me when you're a world champion, will you? Hey, there's no chance of me forgetting <laughs> you. Hey, you're going to be my helper, aren't you? Yeah, no, we, <laughs> we, we did a that deal, didn't we? Because I, I thought I'd be long retired by now. Not long retired, but... <laughs> So I thought, oh, you if you'd ever, if you'd ever pull your finger out and give me a few quid to be your assistant, <laughs> I could retire into that job, you know what I mean? So I could still win through you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. and enjoy, enjoy racing, but sorry, mate. You're yeah, it's like, not quite going on. It's not working out no, yet. No, and I'm, I'm, I'm super enjoying my racing right now. Like it's, yeah, you've got too many years left, mate. You, you're still well, I've well got, in the front. I've got a few anyway, but I think my life will be dictated when I retire. It's like when I stop enjoying it because you know yourself, we talked about the injuries and whatnot in dark times, but it's a big sacrifice. Massive. You know, like you think of, kids. It's not just the kids. Think about the kids you grew up with, all your core mates at school, and the path they're on, and the things you had to do different to, to be good in, in motorcycle racing. It'd be the same if you know, you're a footballer, or yeah. you know, your kid's into competitive sport. You, know, you have to be really disciplined. And, but I'll tell you, when it works out, and you've a uh, you know, you get your first world championship FIM medal on, it's all worth it. 100%. But the thing is, we, we sacrifice obviously all the, the usual stuff you do when you're young. You're going out, you're just, just so many things that you do miss out on. But ultimately, like you said, all the dedication and sacrifice that you do now is obviously to pay off later on. And when you finally get 
you've had obviously experienced it many times, but hopefully I get to experience it when you put that World Championship medal, like you say, I think um, then it's all worth it. Yeah, I think that's what we're talking about, the, the dark times. There is a point where you have to say, you know, you've got to have a good level, don't you, to keep wanting to yeah. push on, you know, you can't just be nowhere and keep saying, oh, I'll just try harder and it'll come, it'll come. I remember, hey, I remember, I hope you don't mind me saying, but I remember speaking to you a bit last year, obviously, and and you were saying that you were self-doubting. You were self-doubting yourself, like saying, oh, I don't know if I can and yeah. do it. And But that's somebody that's won so many world titles to even have that. And, and I think that would be nice for people to, to hear from a public uh, perspective because they think you've just got it all sus, but didn't doubt myself. I've always believed in myself. And I think you have to. Yeah. Without being arrogant, I think I'm one of the best in the world. Yeah. But when it, there's noise around everybody else, other riders, I was fell into the, the trap of heaping too much praise on others. Yeah. Superbike right now, top rack's growing up so fast, he's doing good, super talented guy. Maybe I give him too much credit. Yeah, I think you do. No, from a from a I did. an outsider. And you know, I thought, ah, oh, you know, maybe that's He's the guy, you know? And then, all of a sudden, You're the, guy, the momentum that's... would change, and I would, I'm like, do you know, I, I hate it myself for having that bit of self-doubt. And not self-doubt, but creating too much... Um, hype around him, almost. Hype around him. But do you know what that is? That's kindness as well. That's not anything... No, it's that's res that, that, it's respect. Yeah, kindness and respect, because you, you, you're not a, nice, not, like, not a horrible guy. So I think naturally that you would always lean towards that, no matter if you are a competitor or somebody. But I think, because you've had such a fierce rivalry now, obviously you still have the respect there for him, but you don't give him the stuff to feed off, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, I guess so, I guess so. But every day's a learning day. That's enough about last year. What about the rest of uh, the season? How's that looking? Good. Obviously, we've got Silverstone coming up. Obviously, I rode there last year on the GP bike, so it'll be actually... Ah, yeah, you did. What's yeah. the biggest differences then? Oh, my From God. From Moto2 to Moto GP. Obviously, the obvious, the power was so far from anything I've ever ridden. It was like someone hit fast forward when I went down Hangar Straight. I broke halfway down the straight. I was that scared. I generally thought to myself, I don't know if you've ever had this. I thought it's that fast. I don't know if my brain's going to adjust. <laughs> and I'm thinking this, this is going to be not good if it doesn't. Yeah. But five laps later, it was fine. And do you know what? My fastest ever lap on a British Superbike around there, I think was like a 204 or something like that. And within 10 laps, I'd done a, a 202 or something yeah. on the MotoGP bike. So I couldn't believe it. So it's miles faster than I'd ever been. How hard you can push the tyres, I think, is the biggest difference. Sure. Everything else, like the, the way that the, the connection with the throttle was really strange for me as well. There was no power on the side of the tyre. But then as soon as you pick the bike up, then it obviously introduces more. So that took, took a bit of getting used to. But yeah, it was obviously, it was great to ride. And you know, in this sport and in MotoGP, it's, it's one of them things, I feel like you have to go out and win to, to be worthy of something to, to ride a MotoGP bike. And I felt like I'd done a really good job. In Aragon, I was only 0.8 to a second, I think, off the top. I was thinking I was 0.8 off Fabio. So around Aragon, it's a long lap, it's a technical yeah. lap, and sometimes I feel like it just goes amiss, and I think it, oh, that's, the hard, that's the hard thing. I turned up and went seventh and eighth, and I was forgotten about. Exactly. It's so tough, it's ruthless there. I remember when you did that as well. Yeah. Mazzano but... and... Aragon. Aragon, yeah. yeah. Hey, it'll be interesting to see what lap time you did yeah. to what I did. You, maybe the guys at Cal and Ash can pull that out and yeah. put it on the subtitles here. It did take me a long time to go faster than my superbike lap, to be honest. But I remember qualifying seventh. You had mixed conditions as well. Yeah. Bo it was, both times. It was wet and dry both through practice. Not claimed the fame because old Valentino, not old, young Valentino was on a Ducati, bless him. Yeah. And it wasn't working the best, but he was behind me in the grid. And my electronic guy came to me on Saturday night and he made me so nervous because he said, well, Valentino's told his guys that he'll probably be racing with you tomorrow in the group. What? Oh, can I just like sign now, you yeah. know? That would have been amazing. That, that's funny because obviously when I did the wild cards, Valentino was my teammate for yes. two races and I'd never thought, did he speak Obviously, much with you in the garage or anything? Or it would be, any... you, know, you should never meet your, your idols, you know. I yeah. find that's always a bit... He was sound, like yeah. dead, dead cool, but I just... I don't know, I expected more. He's obviously coming to the end of his career. It was his last last uh, season in MotoGP and my claim to fame was to, off the start, 
first lap, I see that he'd left the door open in, you know, as you go through the long right before it tightens right back up before the corkscrew. Yeah. But like, so he left the gap there and I, I, I dive, dive, dive bombed him, sat him up massive. Oh, and no. then we're having a bit of a battle for one half laps and then I tuck the front. Oh. So I was battling with Valentino, but tucked the front. I didn't know to say that. Because he, he is like... The but proper Ushtin. Yeah. Like, proper give it to him. <laughs> As you're doing yeah. Can you imagine yeah. what he would have been thinking? After the summer break, you've got yeah. a lot of races. Your yes. calendar's like yeah, yeah, stacked. Yeah, yeah. What, what's your favourite track you're looking forward to now? Where's the... don't want to say it, but where's the big result coming? Where do you see that coming? Honestly, it could be anywhere. That's not me just being like, just saying that because it's easy to say that. I generally think it's a matter of time. I've finished um, on the podium twice this year. I've had a lot of front rows, two poles, etc. So everything's there. So I generally think it's any time and I'm not putting any pressure on it because I did. And I've crashed out a few times from the lead of the, uh, the races this year by putting too much pressure on myself to go out and perform. So I think Silverstone could be a good one. Um, the track obviously I know really well. But also, I think any of them. Honestly, now looking at them, any of them, I can go out and be on the podium or win. Brilliant. So it's just a matter of time. What about you? I've uh, obviously you can win. <laughs> you win everywhere. It's but... Weird. Our first half of this, our first six races have been so spread out. We have a summer break in August, and then it's so come not even had so yet. so so fast. And we'll come back and it gets like MotoGP season. It's like race on, race off, race on, race on, race off, race on. Weekend, you know. I'm oh, looking yeah. forward to it. You know, I'm, I'm there, thereabouts in the championship. Alvaro's, um, you know, very strong with that Ducati, but I, I, I'm excited yeah, for but it. There's one thing that you've done before. Rattled you've him. You've broke him. Rattled him. Broke him, and, and I think it don't take a lot to break him. Yeah, well, the good thing in Nyan's Superbike is it's so unpredictable. You yeah. can ask many questions. Is Kawasaki going to improve? Is Top Rack going to get back to winning ways? Is Bautista that strong? When's Bautista going to unravel? Is, yeah, gonna is gonna Top Rack going to unravel? Am I going to unravel? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, uh, it's so unpredictable. It's, it's good right now, so it's good to be part in that mix. I'm always a massive supporter. I'll always a massive JR fan. Yeah, I'll be on it. Anyway, listen, thanks so man. much for coming out. I'm glad I got a win over you, so. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we can do, hey, we're not doing motocross because you're definitely just, yeah, it's not, I won't even turn up. Yeah, right, we've had it here. Uh, Carl Nash. Next year, Northern Ireland, Knox no. Corner, rematch. Definitely not. I'm not coming. <laughs> Actually, I think my flight's already cancelled. <laughs>